This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1660. The Flash Workout, How to Gain Superhuman Speed, part one, by Mike Insko with nerdfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Saturday. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. Imagine this is like an audiobook, but with articles instead, and articles from a bunch of different authors. And at the end, I always provide my commentary. Now on Fridays, that's where I answer your questions. Remember, you can send me a question by going to oldpodcast.com slash ask, or you can email your question directly to health at oldpodcast.com. Now today's episode is a little longer than normal, so as usual, I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. So with that, Let's get to part one where we can hear all about how we too can have superhuman speed like the flash as we optimize your life. The Flash Workout, How to Gain Superhuman Speed, part one by Mike Insko with nerdfitness.com. Growing up, I lived next to the local airport. Naturally, my ideal superpower was the ability to fly until I tried it by jumping from a picnic table. Result broken arm. Ouch, lesson learned. This dude can't fly, no matter how hard he flaps his arms. Once I got out of the hospital, arm covered with a sweet neon blue cast, I thought maybe I should focus on a superpower that was realistic for a mere mortal and less likely to result in catastrophic injury. Why, hello there, superhuman speed. You're cool and meet my criteria. Do you want to be my superpower? From that day forward, I was running around pretending to be Sonic the Hedgehog. I was eight and my arm was still in the blue cast. At this point, it made sense. No judgment, please. Stealing bases during Little League, being the only chubby lineman sprinting down the field in flag football, and just running from my grandpa's porch to the fence in the backyard because it was straight up fun. Eventually, I got older and joined the track team. If there was ever a time that I needed to level up my speed, it was then. As a little old 8th grader taking on seniors in the 100 meter, 200 meter, and eventually the 400 meter, I was way out of my league. I might as well have been Raphael on the roof taking on the entire foot clan. From then on, my love of sprinting and being superhumanly fast only grew. I leveled up again and again, even winning a few races along the way. Then, all of a sudden, I graduated high school. Game over, man. There are no more levels to complete. Or so I thought. Five years later, I had the opportunity to compete again. Mixed in with the mass amounts of running clubs and weekend 5Ks, I found what to me looked like a golden ring. A track meet with real sprinting events. Oh, happy days. I showed up in my uniform, which was nothing more than a couple of pairs of compression shorts and an old workout shirt that was a few sizes too small. All strategically chosen to reduce the drag caused by the wind as I sprinted flawlessly around the track showcasing my superhuman speed for all to see. Wrong. This time I was the 25-year-old getting smoked by a bunch of youngsters. I was the tails to their Sonic, always one step behind. A new game had begun. I needed to level up and reclaim the ability I once had. Cue the montage. Just sprint, baby. Since then, it's been three sprint workouts per week. One short, one medium, and one long. No overthinking optimal running distances coupled with perfect rest periods interlaced with a nutrition plan straight out of Ivan Drago's meal journal. Just sprinting. Why, you ask? Because it's freaking awesome. That's why. Need more than that? Okay, fine. When you sprint, you are contracting more muscles with more power. We have all read about how the best way to make progress in the weight room is to lift heavier weights for less reps instead of light weights for thousands of reps. Yet for reasons beyond me, too many people can't fathom that this approach would also work when running. Simply put, by running shorter distances at faster speeds, you will build muscle and burn fat, just like lifting heavy weights in the weight room. You might be worried about your endurance. Theoretically, it makes sense that if you switch all of your endurance building runs for sprints, you will be less able to run long distances. Well, in reality, that's not always the case. By sprinting, you're able to build strength in the same muscles and movement patterns you use when running distance. After adding sprints, you can actually cover more ground with the same effort or 
cover the same ground with less effort, leaving you plenty of energy for the kick to the finish line. Bottom line, by replacing some of your longer runs with sprints, you won't suddenly lose the ability to complete a 10K. You'll more than likely run it faster and or easier because you'll be stronger. Sprinting will also increase your overall endurance. When you work out at higher intensities, whether it's weights or sprints, you can create an oxygen debt that your body must recover from. This is called excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, or EPOC, sometimes called the afterburn effect, and it can last up to 72 hours after you end the workout. This extended low-level energy is supplied by the aerobic system. So now instead of working on your aerobic capacity by pounding pavement, you can work on your aerobic capacity by watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie and singing along to Turtle Power as the credits roll. I call that a win-win. Between the building of muscle, cultivation of power, and honing of the aerobic system, there is no reason to not be sprinting. Runners, to your marks. It's almost too easy to get started with adding sprints to your training. A bit of open space is all you need. For the sake of this article, I'm going to assume that you're doing some type of exercise already. Maybe it's distance running, or maybe it's weights. No matter, a few days of sprints thrown into the mix is going to help you level up in less time. If you're a complete newbie and haven't done anything resembling exercise in a while, don't worry, we've got you covered in the next section. Just don't think about sprinting near 100% effort. Sprinting is simple, but not necessarily easy. Depending on your ability, you're going to have to ease your way into sprinting. Even then, you should stay around 80% of your top speed to get the most out of your training. Running at 100% effort is only necessary if you're competing in a track meet. Get set. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, here is the how part that complements the why. These are a few of the simplest and most effective sprinting workouts that you can do. Hills. Hills are awesome. They are a fantastic workout for beginner or advanced sprinters. You're not only working against a constant resistance, think gravity, but you're also ingraining the forward lean and lower body mechanics of good sprinting form. If you don't have a hill nearby that you already know of, just Google your city name and sledding hill or reservoir. You may only find one that's a bit of a drive away, but it's still 100% possible to pick a day, make the trip, and then do a hill sprint. You can also add in a park workout or a body weight workout too. Since you're limited to what hills are nearby, it's worthless to prescribe a distance. Be resourceful and use what you have available. If you look at the hill and think it's steep enough and long enough to have you huffing and puffing by the time you reach the top, you've found a keeper. Do anywhere from six to 20 sprints, depending on the steepness, length, and if you're doing just sprints, or if you're doing sprints and resistance training. Flying 30 meters. A flying 30 meters is just an 80% max effort sprint of 30 meters with a 10 meters running start. You'll run 10 meters as you build up to 80% effort and then hold that 80% effort for 30 meters. These can actually be done for any distance, but usually are maxed out at 150 meters. The goal of these types of sprints is to work on max speed and proper form. Before you even reach 150 meters at or around 80% max effort, your form will start to break down. Mike Smith, author of High Performance Sprinting, sums it up nicely by telling his athletes, speed before fatigue. Start off with 30 meters and work your way up to 150 meters as you get faster. Anything from four to 12 reps is worthwhile. Keep the total distance around 400 to 500 meters and rest for two to four minutes between sprints. As soon as your form starts to break down, stop the workout. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Flash Workout. How to Gain Superhuman Speed by Mike Insko with nerdfitness.com. Right now, hiring is challenging. It's time for a hiring partner that can help you rise to the challenge. That's Indeed. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications 
that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. I love that Indeed makes hiring easy. Indeed helps star applicants shine with over 135 assessment tests from cooking to coding. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash health. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash health to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. These types of high-intensity exercises, if we wind the clock back a few years, these types of high-intensity exercises were looked down upon. Most health professionals and some doctors would say that for beginners, doing these types of high-intensity moves are not a good idea. And I was definitely in that boat. We used to think that these high-intensity moves would be risky. But now that we have some data, some actual research to support whether it's truly risky or not, we're actually finding that high-intensity exercise is safe for most people, even those with a history of disease. For example, those with a history of cardiovascular disease, doing high-intensity activities may not be harmful, but actually might be helpful. Now, of course, my disclaimer is always, always, always check with your doctor before performing high-intensity activities like sprints. But if your doctor clears you, it might actually be a good idea. But we always have to keep in mind, if you're gonna do these high-intensity moves, as Mike explained, form is key. Because if you don't follow proper form, that's when you get injured. So whether you're lifting weights, whether you're doing body weight moves, whether you're doing sprints, it's all about proper form. If you start to get sloppy, that's when injuries will occur. So of course, get your doctor's approval first, but if this sounds like something that's right for you, maybe go out there and do a sprint or two. Even if you're not ready to actually run, maybe just walk as fast as you can, and that could be your form of sprinting to start, and that's okay. Instead of walking at your normal pace, Walk as fast as you can for as long as you can and then stop, rest, and then do it again. Even if you just do that, I guarantee you'll feel the effects. All right, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend if you're listening in real time. Thank you as always for listening. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.